Our mission at Smog Ventures is to help Central Eastern European entrepreneurs create global companies. We do this by bridging Silicon Valley and Central Eastern Asia to Europe and to Poland. Uh, we help uh, us, we help entrepreneurs uh, with our network, um, and we can do this because our team is pretty international. So the four members of our team are Poland and Bragiel, uh, American investors, angel investors, and venture capitalists um, who have invested in a number of uh, unicorns, so startups, you know, valued at over a billion dollar, including Stripe or Unity or uh, Uber, Carousel, Gojek, and a number of others. And there is a Polish branch uh, based in Warsaw, so it's myself and Diana, and we are former entrepreneurs and community leaders. Um, and we, we, we help uh, startups by both uh, investing, but also helping them connect to the world's best founders, corporate officials, and helping them grow uh, this way. Mm, Smog invests between 50,000 and a million USD into a single startup. Uh, and we focus on two niches. One is uh, digital, so anything a SaaS marketplace, anything digital uh, that you're trying to disrupt a big market, uh, and gaming, both gaming studios and anything that's related to gaming. And this is because our backgrounds as entrepreneurs. Uh, as of September 2020, we've made five investments so far. Um, those are Smart Hotel, a SaaS service for hotels, helping them with customer care. Uh, Instreamly, which is a, a marketplace um, that connects Twitch streamers with uh, advertisers, allowing the long tail Twitch streamers to make a lot of money. And then there is Gaminate, which is a food supplement for gamers, allowing them to game, play really, really long and really well uh, and be very focused on their esports venture. And two gaming uh, studios, Exit Plan Games a premium uh, studio focusing on games for PC and uh, the consoles, and Nibble Games, which is a mobile gaming studio. So how do you get investment from someone like us, an early stage venture capital fund? How do you approach VCs? Let's say you are a startup founder and you've just started your venture and you feel that you need venture capital in order to grow. How do you approach, how do you find us? So we're pretty easy to find because our our goal is to invest in top entrepreneurs, in people who will change the world. So we are actively looking to connect with entrepreneurs. So it's pretty easy to actually find us. We are pretty well networked. So if you're doing anything in the tech ecosystem, you probably know at least one person that knows me well and that I trust. And that's the best way to connect with us. So an intro from, some, from someone that I trust and someone that believes in you and trusts you is the best kind of intro because that puts a lot of validation uh, b before we, we even meet. So some of the best intros are intros from uh, our port portfolio founders, people we've invested in and we trust, from our friend VCs who are maybe later stage, so you are a bit too early for them, but they might be a good fit for your next round. Uh, but also your former boss, for example, would be a really good introduction because that's, that tells me that you've got a really good relationship with them and they trust you and you've been a good employee. Not so good intros are intros from people you've just met at a party or just connected on LinkedIn. People I don't know well, uh, that doesn't really validate you because I don't trust those people. So it's really hard for me. It doesn't really give you too much. And it's kind of a waste of time. So if you don't have a good way to um, get an introduction to me, a, 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 a one that I trust, skip it because this is not really required. So it's a good first step. Uh, it filters out uh, some of the other people, but you can do it pretty well by just writing a good cold email to me, but a good one. You need to focus on being good because a lot of people write really shitty emails. So the, 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 the kind of thing that you have to focus on first is just like on a party, you're trying to pick up a girl or a boy, you're kind of trying to now make a connection with me and you need to say, the thing that is the most important, the most impressive about you first. So let's say you've exited a company and you made a lot of money to your investors. Say it. That's super important because it tells me that you're you know, a, a person that already made money. So hopefully you'll make money for me as well. If you've been a VP of a big company like Google or like a, a big player in your space that you're trying to disrupt now, 
tell me about that too. That validates you. But even if you haven't done anything as amazing, you've done something for sure. Maybe you've built a community, online community. Maybe you've written a, an article that's been quoted a lot of times in your industry. Maybe you've got a lot of connections you can show it. Even if you haven't done anything, then you can maybe show me advisors who you've convinced already to be uh, in your company to advise you and, and maybe they validate you as well. You always can find something that will be a, a, a reason for me to be to say, okay, this guy or this girl has done research already. They, they've put in the work. So once you get through the email, the email should be quick. It just should be a few paragraphs. It just needs to you know, catch my eye and I would need to say, okay, this is interesting enough for me to read the deck. So the, for the second thing you need to, to show in an email, just attach a deck, a plain PDF uh, with maybe 10 slides on which you should tell me first why, why you're doing this, what problem you're trying to solve, and what's your solution? Like, how is it different than anyone else in this industry? I need to understand your kind of way of thinking. How did you come up with this idea? Why do you feel this problem exists? Ideally, you've talked to a lot of people and they told you that, or you have really good insights into the industry that you're trying to disrupt. And then, the, the, maybe even the most important thing in the, in the deck is, is, is things about you, about your team. Who are you? Who is your team? What you've done before? How does it kind of work together? It needs to be a clear picture for me that this team is the best team in the world to, to do this specific startup and succeed. And then traction is important. If you've already got ca paying customers, that's important. How your business model works is important, but try to be very concise and quick here because 10 slides is enough. I have about one minute to kind of be a yes or no. Like, do I want to meet this person or not? So you need to be very interesting and, and very concise. Uh, if it's super long, it might kind of distract me and I, I won't know what to focus on. So you know best what to focus on, Tell me that and be short. Like in any case, whatever you're, you're trying to do is, you're trying to get a meeting. So the, the number one goal for you is to build credibility. That's, all, that's the only thing that's important. So you need to make sure that I read this and I say, hey, this is an opportunity I cannot miss. This is a very important opportunity for me. This guy, this girl has put in the effort and it seems like this, this can be a big hit. So I need to kind of have this in my mind and then I'm gonna meet you for sure. We get you know, about 100 emails with pitch decks every month. We, we meet about 10%, about 10 people. Um, and then we invest maybe in one. So, so yeah, it's, it's hard <laughs> to get it. But then again, there is a lot of really bad, bad emails, bad introductions. So if you do your work, it's actually pretty easy to at least get this call with me. And then once you get a call, you can sell more. You can sell your story, but the important thing is build credibility, get a, get a, get a call with us, and then you you know you rock. So we we said yes a few times, we've said no many more times. Unfortunately, that's how VC work works. It sucks, and there's some common reasons for no. So some of those reasons are not really relevant to you. Like you can have a great company, it's just not a fit for us, and this might be not a fit because maybe you're building an agency or a software house not a startup. So we need to see that this is something that will scale very fast. This needs to be a venture investable business. I need to feel that this business can become a unicorn or at least like a, you know, half a unicorn. So it needs to be valued at like half a, half a billion dollars. How, what's your path to that? If I don't see that, it might be a great business for you that makes you a lot of money, but not VC investable kind of business. You might be too early for us, in those cases, we refer to ReactorX as a you know, great first place to validate your idea and, and, and build this traction. You may be too late for us too. Like we do not invest in late stage startups who make a lot of money already because we early stage, we have a different thesis basically. So you should approach different VCs if you're late stage. There's some other details that sometimes kind of when you already get into due diligence and we feel that we like this company, but then it turns out maybe that it spends so much money, like the burn rate is horrible. You're, you're spending like, you know, like 200K a month and you're not making any money. 
that means you know whatever we invest it will last for not much longer and you have to either like start making money super quickly or get your next funding super quickly which is a big risk for us so there's a few of those things i think broken cap tables is probably the number one reason uh, we said no to companies before even meeting them so let me say a few words about that because that's pretty common for central eastern europe in general by broken cap table i mean if like you're super early stage but you already have like an angel investor who owns maybe you know half of your company this might seem okay to you but then if you're like at this stage but then if you really want to build a huge business you have to think this way like you'd be raising capital a few times like in the next 10 years and every time you raise capital someone gets into your equity and you get less and less and less of your startup so you might end up with like you know one or two percent of your company at the time of an exit and to me this is not acceptable because i don't feel you'd be motivated enough like it needs to be your company you need to own like you know 20 30 percent of your company at the exit so that this is a really big cash for you so you want to you know work for it you know you know kick ass for it you want this to be your whole life that's why i feel that like we like to be the first investor in your company like we like a clean cable cap table when you basically just you and your co-founders own equity maybe your employees and we are then the first investor we enter with like five to fifteen percent uh, of your equity and then you have enough space to give away equity for the you know series a series b series c and then an exit it still makes you rich and it makes me excited because i want to make you rich because if i make your if you know you make yourself rich you make us rich as well um, so the kind of common you know good kind of thinking about the cap table is that after the seed round you should not give away more than 20 percent of your equity after the series a round it should be more or less 30 percent and then about 10% every round. So when you get to like Series E or whatever, you still own a big chunk of your company. Um, yeah, and one more thing that kind of comes, um, comes up in my conversations with founders when they're raising capital, specifically for the first time, is how much they're worth. They don't know, like they wanna raise maybe half a million, but like how much equity they should give away. And I came up with this kind of, you know, not a great, but I mean, at least this is this shows some, you know, some of my vision of of the market, um, which kind of it has two kind of uh, there's like two factors that 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 that, that get you into it. One is the, the your experience in founding, and the second is your traction. So if you don't have any experience in founding companies and you have no traction, you're kind of in trouble because you're not worth much. It's really hard to invest in you. you there's no big reasons to invest in you you need a big visionary investor to kind of see something here so the later you you raise capital the better for you so if you know if you can afford it to work until you get at least like a product market fit and ideally some early customers that will really increase your your, your valuation maybe tenfold versus if you are a serial entrepreneur you've done already something something before it doesn't go so fast so even early stage you can you know get a valuation that's reasonable and it doesn't dilute you too much doesn't dilute your equity in your startup so think of this obviously sometimes you have to raise money but then maybe raise little money just enough to get you to the next stage and then do a bigger round when you're ready when you have traction we have customers and the valuation will be bigger um so yeah i mean uh, that's it for me. I, I'm really interested to talking to you. Whatever stage you are, whatever you're trying to, to, to do, I'm always happy to help entrepreneurs. So just hit me up uh, whenever stage you are and, you know, hit me an email, write me a good cold email, and I'm sure I'll respond. So thank you for this and good luck with your startup.